Good evening. The March 11, 2024 meeting of the Greensville County School Board is now called to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Madam Chair Janet Roberts. Here. Vice Chairman Russ Bessie. Here. Mr. Ron L. Pearson. Here. Ms. Bessie Reed Moore. Here. A quorum has been established. All right, thank you. May we bow our heads for the invocation? Lord, as we go into this meeting today to conduct school board business, we ask that you be with us, guide our hearts and our minds in the spirit of fairness, right thought and speech. Impart your supreme wisdom upon our activities so that our affairs may reach a fair, successful conclusion. Thank you for being our source of guidance today and always. Amen. 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 At this time, we're seeking the motion for the approval of the minutes. So moved. Second. It's been moved and properly second that we accept the minutes from the February meeting. All those who are in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those who oppose, nay. The ayes have it. The motion carries. Now we are seeking the motion for approval of the agenda. Madam Chair, I make a motion that we remove the budget presentation as an action item until a later date. Second. Okay. It's been moved and properly second that we move the budget presentation to a later date. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those that oppose nay, the ayes have it. The motion carries. Uh, now we're seeking a motion for the approval of the warrants and financial information. So, so moved. Okay. Second. All right. It's a motion, uh, it's been moved and properly second and that we accept the approval of the warrants and financial information. All those who oppose, I mean, uh, all those who approve signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, those that oppose nay. Those, there are no nays, so the motion is carried. Uh, at this time, we're going into the public comments. At this time, we're going into a public hearing for the upcoming budget. Dr. Edwards? Yes, good evening, everyone. At this time, um, uh, the chair has opened the floor up for anyone who would like to make comments as we enter into this budget season. Um, what the board just has done was they removed it as an action item for this evening. And the board is going to reconvene at a meeting next month and have a special call meeting on the budget. Um, what we do know, I will present a preliminary budget component, but at this time the floor is now open for any citizen to make a comment on the budget for the fiscal year 2025 for Greensville County Public Schools. Madam Chair, I don't see anyone that's gonna make a statement this evening. Although there will be another public hearing, um, the board will establish that meeting this evening so that all will know when next week's meeting is, and we will be reconvening for a pub another public hearing on the board. And I will present after this, the survey and the survey information that was tallied. All right. Okay, we, we're ready to move into yes. our action items. Now, Dr. Edwards will cover the action. Items. Thank you. Would you pull it up? I'd like to say good evening once again. And we started a survey about three weeks ago um, for the public, for our staff, and our community. And in that survey, we gathered information on what the community want, what the staff wants, and also we had some students to take our survey. As always, we are welcoming student voices. And when you look at where we are, the component of the 
for 2025 budget, and we had 200 and 226 responses um, for this survey. 226 responses on the survey that was emailed electronically to the staff, and we had a few that was tabulated by hand. And when you look at this part pie graph here, and we asked the magic question, what should be the top priority for Greensville County Public Schools in developing the 2024-2025 school budget? 65.2% stated that staff raises was very important. 16.5% stated expand program opportunities. Present a budget with no impact on taxes and 12.5 stated keep insurance premiums as low as possible. As you know, we definitely have to consider that in when we are budgeting. And we took some comments because these are some comments taken directly from the survey. Hire a mental health counselor. Have social and emotional supports for students. Offer more CTE programs. CTE stands for Career Technical Education, VOTEC in the old guard. Have retention bonus for employees that are loyal to Greensville County Public Schools. We need new school buses. Modernize all media centers. And these comments were taken directly from the survey. When you look at, once again, the pie graph, instructional materials, and you look at student teacher, go back to the bar graph, please, um, classroom technology, maintenance and upkeep, offer professional development, athletics, extracurricular activities, field trips, trips, and transportation. When you say, where should the school division prioritize funding to enhance our students' experience? And this is taken directly from the survey. And so uh, that the board would like to ask, are there any questions about the survey? The survey was up three weeks and then we extended it. It, was, it ended on last um, Friday and we extended it to the um, noon today. I don't know. Okay, thank you, I'll move on. And so when you look at where we are on the preliminary budget presentation and where we are is this, the General Assembly this past week approved a budget, and now where does that budget go? This budget goes to the governor's office. So the 2024 General Assembly completed the state budget. The next step is to go to the legislative committee, then to the governor. Now, what is in the governor's biennium budget? The governor is calling for a 3% salary increase for teachers in each of the bienniums, and that's for the next two years. But a special note, it is based on the locality's ability to pay. When you see the governor asking for putting a 3% budget increase into the budget, but when you look at the LCI, which stands for Local Composite Index, and also the average daily membership, no locality can give the raise unless it has the local ability to pay. I want to stress that. And when you look at this 3%, the last two years, what Governor Yunkin put in his budget, which we did honor, was a 5% pay increase across the board. Now, also changes in how the ELL students are counted and funded. Changes in how at risk add-on is determined and funded. This is also placed in the SOQ. SOQ stands for Standards of Quality and also to restore general fund payment in lieu of sales tax. This is what the General Assembly voted upon, but the next step is the Legislative Committee and then to go to Governor Yunkin for final approval. And once the governor approves the budget, then we'll have the budget. And as always, we want to keep our budget priorities focused on our why. Our why would be our students and our staff and teachers. Because when you look at a school system's budget, over 75% is devoted to the salaries of inst for instruction, and that encompasses our teachers, paraprofessionals in the classroom. 
I want to bring to mind also changes over time. And we took these numbers back to 2017, 2018. We think it is historical because we all know what happened in 2020. There was a pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic. So in 2017, 2018, we were at an average daily membership of 1,233 students from Greensville, 933 from Emporia, totaling 2,226. 2018, 2019, 1,287 from Greensville County, 963 from Emporia, totaling 2,250. 2019, 2020, 1,247 from Greensville County, 966, totaling 2,213. And in 2020, 21, 1,200 from Greensville, 910 from Emporia, totaling 2,110. And the 21-22, coming off of COVID-19, this was the first year that Greensville County Public Schools had to base a budget below 2,000. And, and in that year, it was 1,093 from Greensville County, 893 from Emporia, totaling 1,986. Well, post-pandemic, 2022-23, we are now back above um, 2,000, and that number is 1,184 from Greensville County, 867 from Emporia, totaling 2,051. And for this fiscal year, the 23-24, 1,106 from Greensville, 965 from Emporia, totaling 2,071 students. And I would like to add, when we talk about ADM, we're speaking students K through 12. Students K through 12. And that is the preliminary component. And I just want to highlight once again, the legislation is going forward to the governor's office from the committee. And once that is taking place, we will be keeping a watchful eye out on the budget. And the board will be discussing a date next week that we will be coming together to have a presentation of the proposed fiscal year 24, fiscal year 25 budget for presentation and adoption and the joint city council school board and board of supervisors meeting is now scheduled for March the 26th at 6 p.m. at the Golden Leaf Commons. Madam Chair, that's my presentation. Thank you, Dr. Edwards. Board members, make sure you put down March 26 at 5 p.m. 6, 6 o'clock. March 26 at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Uh, any of our employees that would like to come and experience that, we'll, we welcome you there as well. <laughs> it is an experience. All right. um, now we're going to move to Greensboro County Public School highlights. Uh, yes, sir. All right, the cap update, all right. Yes, at this time I will present my corrective action plan update as it is a monthly report. As Greensville County Public Schools is still under a memorandum of understanding with the Virginia Department of Education. Under the category of academic and student success, and I will highlight a few of these, you can see these above on your presentation on the screen. As you know, there is a continuous focus on chronic absenteeism. Chronic absenteeism committees, committee met on January the 29th. And what we're doing is we are definitely going through trying to ensure that our students come to school. And we certainly thank our community for helping us with that because we do see an uptick in, in the component of our students coming to school. And we know sickness can hit, especially at the elementary, Ms. Coker and therefore sometimes preventing our babies from coming to school. But for the most part, we have a rise in our student attendance. We also reviewed secondary SOL results and benchmarks, and those scores were prevented, presented from the high school at, at our last meeting. Um, had some more independent day school discussions. Um, we've been on a constant review with the Greensville County High School master schedule. As we know, we are embarking, even though we are in the third nine weeks, 
we have to have to carefully plan and have a master schedule for the upcoming school year. We're still working with and participating in the Cook Center for Mental Wellness. That was on February the 8th. And we had a good strategic plan work session with the Berkeley Group. The board has met um, with the Berkeley Group. Our directors and senior level leadership have met with the Berkeley Group. And we are scheduling our fourth session on March the 19th that we come up with our strategic plan and its components to move Greensboro County Public Schools forward. VIVOS Growth Discussion Webinar. That's the Virginia, uh, when you look at the academic component of growth, and that is VIVOS. Had a freshman academy planning session, and we thank the high school and Ms. Harrison and Dr. Farkerson for working with us as we plan for a freshman academy. Attended the Region 8 Superintendents Meeting, and as always, on an ongoing, continuous basis, we're participating in the Virginia Transformation Leadership Academy and conferencing with Catapult. And Catapult is assisting us with our writing at the middle school and at the high school level. Have weekly conference calls with our school quality liaison, Dr. Johnson, on February the 6th, 13th, 20th, 27th, and March 3rd. Our senior executive leadership meetings from the 29th through February the 12th. Executive principals meetings and also our directors meetings where we have our working on the work sessions. Under leadership and governance, participated in VTLA. The budget committee met on February the 27th and also on March the 7th. Participated in a strategic planning work session. Also, along with curriculum and instruction at Southside, where we discussed the early college. Participated in further VBOS discussions. And also participated with more of the weekly discussions with Dr. Johnson, our OSQ liaison. The Virginia Literacy Act is a big component that we're working on. As the state superintendent has said, a superintendent as a literacy leader. And I also had a conference call with our state superintendent. Under the categories of operations and support service, additional exit for Greensboro Elementary School was approved. We showed those plans at the last meeting. We are working on the media center now at Greensville County High School to update it which was unique that we had that comment in our survey. The covered walkway plans have been submitted for Greensville Elementary School. They have gone out for proposal and we, are secure, we have secured a bid for the contract. The installation of the modular unit is complete. Our SROs and SSOs participated in the safety meeting on February 6th, headed up by Dr. Carey and Dr. Scott. We're finishing up the bus fleet assessment and looking at a school bus lease and the geofencing of all campus to provide better safety. Under the component of human resources, participation in the Virginia Association of Personnel Administrators and working with our teacher mentors. There is an upcoming, um, was an upcoming, jo upcoming job fair and that meeting is gonna be with the city and the county at the Golden Leaf and we'll get that date out. And they had a regional meeting on February the 2nd and all staff intent forms have been received for to, to staff our division for the upcoming 24-25 school year. Madam Chair, that completes into the board my cap update for March 2024. All right. At this time, I'm we're seeking a motion and a second to carry through uh, the approval of the cap update from Dr. Edwards. Okay. Oh. All right, we'll move we'll move ahead. Um, all right, we're we're now moved to the spotlight. Yes. The Greens County Public School Spotlight. We we look forward to that each month. It makes us happy to see all of the progress that we're making. That Thank you, is. Madam Chair. And uh, we want to highlight and recognize the honorable Judge Lydia Person Ramsey. Judge Ramsey graced us with her presence at our CTE and at our Black History Month program. And the spotlight is simply where we're gonna highlight each month a graduate of Greensville County High School and moving forward. And we are honored to have Judge Ramsey as the first spotlight for Greensville County Public Schools. And she's doing a wonderful job as she is a judge. And she told us a wonderful story about her matriculation through UVA and how she became a judge 
and also served as the um, Commonwealth, Commonwealth attorney here in Greensburg County and in Brunswick. So join me in giving a celebration to our spotlight for this month, Judge Lydia Person Ramsey. Thank you. Okay. Going to move the special recognition. Yes, ma'am. All right. I'd like to call forward Ms. Riddick, our board clerk, to start our recognitions and highlights for the month of March. Madam Chair, Mr. Chairman, board members, Dr. Edwards, colleagues, and guests, good evening. Good evening. I'm excited because tonight I only have one recognition, so you all don't have to sit through a lot. Um, March is Women's History Month. I have a proclamation to read, and I would act, like to ask the women who are present to please stand with me as I read this proclamation. Thank you so much. Women's History Month. Whereas the courage and immense sacrifice of women has shaped Virginia's history and many historical accounts of pioneers, trailblazers, and groundbreaking women contribute to our strong foundation of American values, scientific achievement, and entrepreneurship. And whereas the beautiful story of the importance of women to Virginia's history, Voices from the Garden, Virginia Women's Monument stands tall on Capitol Square in Richmond and is only one of its kind in the nation. And whereas Virginia's inspirational monument, 12 life-size women depicted in bronze and a wall of honor that recognizes women from all corners of the Commonwealth who have made a difference in the lives and welfare of Virginians, both widely celebrated women as well as unsung heroes. And whereas Pumunky Chief Kokakowski, an astute leader and skillful politician, became leader of the Pamunkey after her death of her husband in 1656 until her death in 1686, and her likeness is beautifully depicted in the Voices of Garden. And whereas Martha Washington, the nation's inaugural first lady and one of the statues included in the monument, was born in the Commonwealth and she is often remembered for her leadership and the support of the Revolutionary War by calling women to provide resources. And whereas Virginia Estelle Randolph was born in Richmond in 1870 to formerly enslaved parents, and today she is remembered in Voices from the Garden as a pioneering educator, community health advocate, organizational leader, and humanitarian. And whereas women strengthen and enrich society, by impact in every field from business to medicine, to government, to the arts, fueling innovation while nurturing the family and promoting the growth and success of tomorrow's leaders. And whereas women fulfill a vital God-ordained role in shaping future generations as they care for the young, shape character, instill history, and promote education and opportunity, other opportunities. Whereas today, as education opens doors to opportunity, women constitute the majority of the student population at Virginia colleges and universities. And whereas Virginians are encouraged to appreciate and honor the past, present, and future contributions of women in the Commonwealth and to empower future generations of women leaders and innovators across all fields, both inside and outside the home as they strengthen the spirit of Virginia. Therefore, Glenn Youngkin salute the First Lady of the Commonwealth, Suzanne Youngkin, and all women who have held this position and do hereby recognize March 2024 as Women's History Month in the Commonwealth of Virginia and part of our observance that honors the history and achievements of women in Virginia and across America. And to all of you, thank you so much for your leadership to Greensville County Public Schools. You may be seated. And for our school competition, uh -huh. it seems like we only go between two That's schools a lot. So, what do we have for Best staff attendance goes to staff attendance. Staff attendance. Greensville County High School. He's still hanging in there. Okay, Greensville County High School. Mm -hmm. 
but he's only going home tonight with one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Only going home with one. He was grinning too hard when he came up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Best student attendance, EWI at middle school, 78%. Come on down. Nice. <laughs> Working on it. <laughs> That's that chronic absenteeism. Oh, yes. Nice job. This person, you can stay up there at the Clean School Award. Also goes to Wyatt Middle School. All right. <laughs> Thank you. This is record breaking. That's all I have. At this time, we will have Dr. Edward Sherwood share with us the update brand and logo. Thank you, Madam Chair. And we would like to give a special recognition to all of those who met on the branding logo committee. And that committee started back in actually September. September, and we had four months of meetings going up to the month of December. And in the month of January and February, the final tabulations on the Greensville County Public Schools logo. So again, thank you so much to that committee. And I do see in the audience, Mr. Z was on that committee. And we thank you, Mr. Z, for being on that committee. And um, they say, don't call names, which you might forget somebody, Miss High Jones. And so we want to look at, and would you bring up the logo, please? And when you look at our academic seal, um, you may say, well, what's different? Um, the font is different. First and foremost, um, when we look at our academic seal, one of the things that we wanted to make sure is that all of the font was the same. So presenting our new academic seal, which resembles the same seal that we had, but all of the font is now the same. Second, the component of the next degree logo, 212 degrees. The committee chose the moving to the next degree. And also there was Ms. Garner, I thought I saw you back there, Ms. Garner was on that committee, and we thank you for uh, moving along. And Mr. Redmond, Mr. Redmond, we thank you for the Next Degree logo, and this is the logo that was chosen by the committee. Thank you so much for all of your work and service as we move to the Next Degree, moving Greensville County Public Schools forward. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Edwards. Yes. Uh, at this time, we will have Dr. Edwards and Mrs. Harrison to give us an overview of the early college at GCHS. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to call Mrs. Harrison forward, our Director of College and Career Readiness. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, Dr. Edwards, and all in attendance. All right, early college is very exciting. Um, just to begin the conversation, we currently offer a early college program. Our current early college program is considered um, the associate degree. That's what, it, what we call it in partnership with Southside Virginia Community College. And we offer those courses here at Greensville County High School. And what we are looking to do as we move to the next degree is to take our early college program and make it in um, an early college at the campus of Southside Virginia Community College here in Emporia. And you will see our first um, draft of our logo. Um, and it will be held over at in Emporia. For those who may not know, it's held at the commonly at the Golden Commons. Um, it's say tell me again, Golden, Golden Leaf Commons. Commons. Got it. Got it. Golden Leaf Commons is where Southside is located for those who may have never gone over there. And we currently have students that's over there now. So what does early college look like? Early college looks like our associate degree program um, on a college campus is what it looks like. Um, we will be having it for our students who are currently pursuing an associate degree track now. 
our juniors and seniors. Our classes will be housed over at, um, at the community college. The early college program and the early college itself, one in the same, will allow students to continue to have those transferable um, college credits that they, that they currently earn. And it will be for students that are juniors and our seniors, the opportunity to continue to earn up to 63 college credits. Um, we have revamped what we're offering with the um, support of Southside to ensure that our students are taking courses that are transferable to other colleges in Virginia. Who would be eligible? The eligibility remains the same as the, in relates to the courses that are required. Students have to have at least a 3.0 cumulative GPA by the end of their 10th grade year, um, have taken the courses that are required through the Virginia Department of Education for an advanced diploma in the ninth and 10th grade, having passed Algebra 1, the course, as well as the assessment, the SOL assessment that goes with it. Our students who are interested in the early college currently on the associate degree track, as 10th graders, they take business management and computer information systems, which is their first introduction to college credits and college courses. So we see how they perform on that to determine if they are good candidates to continue in the early college program. Right. And what do our students have to do? Maintain at least a C in the courses that are taken, um, the dual enrollment courses that are taken to remain a member of the early college program. Um, we are very fortunate here in Greensville County Public Schools, and I'm going to say very extremely fortunate that our students are able to take advantage of um, the college courses at no cost to our parents and our students. We even take care of the textbooks um, that are required. And as long as the students return those, again, it is no fee to them currently, um, to them or their parents. And I will stand here and say that there are very few, very few districts who offer programs um, that with dual enrollment courses that the parents do not have to pay anything for that. So we are really fortunate here in our county to afford, to award, afford this opportunity for our students. Um, Transportation will be provided by um, Greensville County Public Schools, um, but our students, our juniors and seniors with parent permission, uh, will also have the opportunity to drive themselves to Southside. So that's kind of a perk for being a early college student. You have the opportunity to drive. Currently, our students who take our our CTE courses at the college, they have to come here in the morning and get on the bus to be transported over. So that would be um, something that will be different at the early college. And this is a sample of what the courses will look like. Um, but basically, in summary, our juniors will take two courses over at the college um, and then two blocks over here at, um, at the high school. So morning over at the college and afternoon at the high school. And our the schedule as our seniors are in fact preparing to transition to college level, they take three courses over at the early college and those three, um, they take three courses each semester with a fourth block if necessary over back here at the high school. However, our goal is to engage our, our seniors specifically in activities that are related um, and organized by the community college. Greensville County High School, Early College of SVCC, coming August 2024. Questions? How about that logo? <laughs> it looks good. And this has been a conversation for over two years now. And what I can definitely say about Dr. Johnson and Southside Virginia Community College, um, 
anytime that we talk about a partnership, they are definitely open to the partnership and to have this opportunity to offer more students the component of dual enrollment. And I, I wanna be clear, and, and Ms. Harrison, thank you for saying that. This is another opportunity um, for students to earn that associate's degree. And the key thing that she stated was with that articulation agreement with other colleges and universities, a student, once they graduate Greensboro County High School, does have the potential of having 65 credits when they enter that college campus, which is a bonus to the student and a bonus to mom and dad or guardian because the cost of a college tuition on average increases by 14% annually. Thank you so much. And just uh, one more thing, uh, just for clarity, um, just wanted to say that this, the early college does not impact our Governor's School of Southside Virginia. Thank We're you. not um, replacing that at all. Um, it's just something in addition to. So our Governor's School of Southside Virginia still exists. Um, We're just upgrading our college program from Greensville County High School to a early college at Southside. Ms. Harrison, can I add one more thing as well? Yes. Um, if you can, just speak maybe two seconds worth of the, we still would have representation or a liaison um, from our division there at the college uh, when it comes to safety and oh. services might, the, our students might be you know in um, need of, it's not like they're hoping to get everything just from the college that we'll still have some of our folks there as well. Yeah, absolutely. So the early college will be staffed by Greensville County public school staff. As our teachers currently teach the courses or facilitate the courses that will still occur just on the campus of Southside. And we will have um, an administrator as well as um, part-time counselor there to support our students. So we're just not sending them over there. I'm there almost every day now um, with our students through CTE. So they are still our students and they will be um, the responsibility of our staff with Greensboro County Public Schools with the support of SVCC. Is there no more questions? Thank you, Mrs. Harris. All right, you. you're very welcome. Thank you all. We really wanna push this program. It's a, it's a great <laughs> asset. And it'll save parents some money. <laughs> Absolutely. We just you want to we just want to um, improve on what we've already been doing. And um, our students are excited because they even get a college ID. So now yes. they get to when they get to Southside, they get their picture taken, have their high school as well as their college ID. So it's it's a great opportunity for our students. So thank you all. Now, I'm not just pushing it because my husband was a former president, but uh, it's really a good program. It's really a good program. Yes. Okay. All right, at this time, Mrs. Riddick will, uh, our school board clerk will review the VSBA policy updates for us. Thank you, Ms. Roberts. In your, in uploaded in board docs, you have the VSB policy updates for February, 2024. There are about 20, 45, I'm sorry, 45 revisions that are based on changes in law or regulations. Um, in addition to some policies that were revised for editorial reasons or to correct technical errors. All of the revisions have been reviewed for legalities. Um, the policy committee will meet to um, decide whether to adopt the revised policies because some policies will, will require local input before we adopt them. And so we will bring them back for you for um, approval at the next month's meeting. Thank you. You're welcome. We're gonna have, next on our agenda is special education annual plan. This is Williams. Good evening, Madam, Ch Madam Chair, board members, Dr. Edwards, all others in attendance. Um, this, this afternoon, I will be presenting the Special Education Annual Plan, Part B, Flow Through Application Summary. Uh, this plan is for the purpose of implementing the provisions of Individuals with uh, Disabilities Education Act of 2004, uh, referred to also as IDEA. The purpose of the grants, uh, the federal grant is to ensure school divisions 
state operator programs, maintain current policies and procedures and supporting documents and documentation to demonstrate a compliance with federal and state regulations governing provisions of special education and related services, licensure and accreditation. The title of 6B 2004 application includes the following required components, which is, will be presented in a spreadsheet format, um, Excel spreadsheet, excuse me. The superintendent's certification, policy statements, statement of assurance, special education and local and regional jail um, information, the report of the implementation for the plan for the 2023 24 school year. Also, um, the number of December 1 headcount students identified with disabilities for, the, for uh, December 1, 2003 headcount was at 328 students with 14 students um, attending private day schools, and our, which brings our total for the division of 314 students. Uh, the budget includes the following request for the uh, use of federal funds for sections 611 and 619. Uh, 611 total request amount requested $624,064. Uh, this will include for salaries and benefits for special education teachers and two paraprofessionals. And the 619 portion of the grant, which covers the early childhood special education um, department the Early Childhood Special Education Department of Field Trips uh, allotted $2,000 and for the uh, classroom materials and supplies, $8,134. This concludes our required components in the Special Education Annual Plan Part B flow through application for the 24-25 school year. Are there any questions? Thank you, Ms. Williams. Thank you. All right, we are ready to move to the board member committee reports, and I will go first. And yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my update is a governor school update. The board approved the slot fee increase from the humanities student for the humanities students for the upcoming year from three thousand two hundred twenty-one dollars and eighty-four cents to three thousand five hundred dollars. The July board meeting date was voted on and approved to be changed to Wednesday, July 24th, 2024, which is the fourth Wednesday of the month. So we won't have to give up uh, 4th of July holiday. Our <laughs> uh, site events and senior symposiums. On March 8th, all seniors in Alberta from 8.30 to 11 for the annual Renaissance Fair in the bottom of the Student Service Center. On March 29th, all juniors at the SD Center in Chase City from 8.30 to 11 for the annual Gatsby Gala. On April 16th, of the Keysville Senior Symposium at the SD Center, you have to have a formal invitation, uh, which will follow. Uh, hopefully, some of us will get to participate in that. Yes, ma'am. On April 18th, Alberta Senior Symposium at the SD Center, and also there is a formal invitation for that as well. These are the updates that I have at this point. Yes, ma'am. Um, we also had our finance committee um, meet this month as well. Topic being the budget, not only for how we're doing this year, but going ahead and trying to look ahead and help prepare for unexpected turns, uh, maybe from the governor's budget to where it's going to have the least effect on our division. Um, so there was some great conversation in that. Um, and we're just kind of in the, not the wait and see mode, but just we've done a lot of lead work. Dr. Edwards and his staff has, has done even more um, to help us prepare for, for when this gets finalized, to be able to put this out a lot faster than in years past. Okay. Mr. Jessica, so it's probably we're going to be meeting next month, next week. Yes, that's right. Um, so we will also have that, that um, second meeting for this committee. Um, that we will announce the dates right after um, we adjourn this evening and get some information out to the public on that as well, um, just to help entertain any questions or help go over anything else we can uh, 
to help us prepare for our joint meeting coming up at the end of the month. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to move to public comments. Um, at this time, um, any citizen who wishes to address the board at the regular meeting uh, to address the board, the public comment sign-up form must be completed and submitted to the school board clerk no later than 24 hours before the meeting begins. The board asks that each participant's comments pertain to agenda items. To accomplish all business on the agenda, board members will not be able to engage in dialogue with individual members of the audience and no immediate action will be taken on the public comment issue. The chair is responsible for the orderly conduct of the meeting and shall rule on such matters as appropriateness of the subject being presented and the length of time for such presentation. The allotted period of time with the board during public comments is three minutes. Do we have anyone who would like to make comments? Ms. Reed, did anyone sign up for public comments? No, sir. Thank you. All right. Um, action items, okay. We'll move to action items. Um, the first will be the new course request biology two, advanced survey of biology. Yes, and I'd like to call Dr. Farkson forward and um, give us a rationale for us requesting this new course. Um, to the board. Good early afternoon, Madam Chair, board members, superintendent. The Department of Instruction received, reviewed, and provided the superintendent with a new course request for Greensville County High School proposed course Bio 2, Advanced Survey of Biotopics. We received permission from the superintendent to come before the board for, um, for approval of this course. Bio 2 would be a course that would allow juniors and seniors the opportunity to earn a science credit and be provided acceleration to take the biology SOL. This course would be an opportunity for students who have already passed biology, the course itself, but have not earned a verified credit and need additional instructional support during the semester in order to prepare them for the biology um, SOL. The, this course is usually taken after a comprehensive initial study of biology, and those students will have already taken the biology course, so this is not a substitute for the biology class that students already take. This is an attempt to help our students who are having some struggles and some challenges passing the biology SOL. And we shared biology SOL data at our last board meeting, so we know we have some students who could benefit from this course. We would like for this course to begin SY school year 24-25. So students who return or students who are juniors this year who have not passed the biology SOL would be enrolled in this course so that hopefully by the time January fall testing comes around, they will have received all of the support instructionally that they need and we help those students to get that biology verified credit. Any questions? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so currently, um, what are we doing for those students uh, that have passed the class but have not passed the SOL? So currently they receive remediation support. So during the course of the day, the high school works to provide time during that student schedule for the coach or the and or teacher to provide them with remediation. Um, Sometimes students are present, sometimes they're not. Sometimes we're able to fit it in the schedule and sometimes we're not. The opportunity for a course would eliminate the hit or miss because like any other course, it would be on their schedule and they'd be required to attend. And then my second one would be, um, I'm assuming, but this would help accelerate their path to graduate because of the SOL component alone, correct? So it would keep our cohorts together and we would see nicer numbers 
at the end of the school year because we don't have kids who are falling behind in the cohort. So if I start 20, 2020 and I have all my verified credits four years later, I'm remaining with my cohort. So it's not, it's, it's not an acceleration piece for students. It is a keep you on track and keep you from falling behind piece. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Dr. Vakasa? If not, do you have additional information you want to share? I'd like, are they gonna, are we gonna vote on it? Potentially. We are. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you finish your comments, we are going to vote. Yeah. So you can stay there until we vote. Oh, oh I don't have nobody. Else. <laughs> I will entertain a motion to approve the new course request in biology two. So moved. Second. It's been moved and properly second that we approve the new course request for biology two. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those that opposed, nay. The eyes have it, the motion is getting. Our students greatly appreciate it. Absolutely, yes, it's a huge win. Now I am seeking the motion. Oh, wait a minute, no, I'm moving a little too fast. Yes, uh, Dr. Edwards will, will come with the uh, announcements and information. Huh? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we wanna just, um, Coming off of a, a stellar, um, once again, sports season, uh, celebrate our boys and girls. And we are already have already transitioned into the next phase where we have our um, softball, baseball teams are, are starting to compete as well as tennis and, so we, and, and, and soccer. And so we wish all our athletes in this upcoming um, season and a special shout out to our athletes who just finished up their season. And in addition to our announcement, um, Greensville County Public Schools um, received an invite to the fiscal cohort training. Um, and so on tomorrow, um, Dr. Farkerson, um, Ms. Council, um, myself, and Mr. Jesse, we will be attending the um, fiscal cohort training sponsored by the Virginia School Board Association, where we look at fiscally management of a school division from the lens of instruction, finance, governance, and leadership. And we're looking forward to having that training. Also, um, Ms. Garner, in the announcements, want to say a special thank you to you. And because Ms. Garner started a quest where when you come in this cafeteria in the upcoming months, you're going to see new furniture. And that's going to be a component where we keep giving improvements in Greensville County Public Schools. And that concludes my announcements um, for March, Madam Chair. I have one that I might get in trouble for, but I think we'd be going... Um, way underserved if we don't um, give a special shout out to Mr. Pearson who had a birthday uh, this past <laughs> week. So I might hear the end of that a little bit later, but we do definitely want to wish uh, Mr. Pearson a, a happy birthday. Absolutely. Happy birthday. <laughs> and may you be blessed with many more. Yes. Thank you very much. I should have taken you up on your offer. Good morning. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. I'm seeking the motion to go into closed session to discuss, consider, or interview prospective candidates for employment, assignment, appointment, promotions, performance, demotion, salaries, discipline, or resigning of specific public officers, appointees, or employees of the school board, according to Virginia Code 2.2-3711A1, and the student matters to discuss and consider admissions or disciplinary matters concerning any student of any state school system in accordance with Virginia Code 2.2-3711A2. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. second. It's been moved and properly second that we go into closed session. We we'll take a mo uh, vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those that oppose, the ayes have it. We're going into closed session. Thank you all for coming.
somewhere. Uh, at this time, we we're going to have a recommendations. We ready for recommendations? Okay. But, okay. Roll call. <laughs> Madam Chair Janet Roberts. Present. Vice Chairman Rustin Jesse. Yes. Mr. Ron L. Pearson. Here. Ms. Reed Moore. Aye. A quorum is established. It's been moved from the proper second. Okay, yes. recommendation. Yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, um, Madam Chair and to the board, administration recommends approval of matters discussed in closed session as presented on student matters and personnel. Mm -hmm. So moved. Second. A motion has been made and properly second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those that oppose, by saying nay. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. All right, we have any announcements? We've already done announcements and just want to say the board, um, we, we thank you definitely for approving that biology course and moving forward. It would definitely help our students and we just want to say we're continuously making strides toward student achievement here in Greensville County Public Schools um, with us moving forward to having fully accredited schools. Madam Chair, that's all my announcements. All right. If there's nothing else, I'm seeking a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. It's been moved and probably second that we adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Eyes have it, and the meeting is adjourned. Thank you.